going to plant my flower, pretend flower. Well, it's still flower, but I'm going to plant it in its own little spot. Now, unfortunately, by moving it, I sort of messed up the petals, so I'm going to try to get those petals as as they originally were, because they were beautifully fanned out. Let me get and take my spray bottle. Okay. So we still are dealing with the wind. I might be able to get much closer now. Right now I'm focusing on the stamen of the flower. The stamen are the parts that come from the center of the flower and they're actually considered, they're the areas that the bees like to go around and they like to pollinate. Um, now I'm going to focus on the petal of the flower. The stamen will no longer be in focus. The petal, however, will be. Now again, I'm really not doing macro photography just yet. So now I'm going to come up close. And what I do is I go as close as my camera lens will allow me. And then I'm going to move back. Once I start to see it come in focus, I'm going to stop. Okay, so that's me. I'm in focus now. I have the camera very close up. In fact, this will look something like from a different world. Okay, so I was focusing on the stem there, or the stamen. I'm going to increase my exposure to 11. I'm going to drop down to about 50. Let's see how this works. Again, I'm going to go in close. Pull up a little. What's nice is if you can catch a water droplet, it will actually show the petal, that part of the petal that the water droplet is being magnified. It's very attractive. Sometimes when there is a lot of wind and I just can't get around it, I'll actually take the shot of the flower from the side. I usually use what's called the rule of thirds, which is basically the top right third, the left right third, bottom right third, or the bottom left third. One of those four corners. So you're going to cut the image into three halves, or three equal halves, both vertically and horizontally, where the points meet. You'll have those four points, and that is where you want your center of your focus. Now, there's a little bit in contradiction of what I said earlier, but again, if I shoot from the side, yeah, if, the cat, if the flower is moving, it almost looks like it's supposed to be moving. Now, if I want to get really fancy, I can use what's called depth of field preview. Okay, I don't know if you heard that. It's just allowing the shutter to open to allow me to see exactly what I'm going to see and what's going to be in focus when I take the image. Because right now, I'm not getting an actual image of what I'm taking. I'm getting just what the viewfinder is allowing me to see. But it's not necessarily how the image is going to come out in its final run. And then lastly, um, another thing that I do is I'll shoot in manual mode. Again, I'm wanting to get in as close as I can to this flower, so I'm going to bring it into as close as possible, which in this case is 0.31, which is about one-third of a foot, a little bit less. And then I'm going to go in and out and out and out. Once I start seeing something in focus, 
I'm going to start shooting. Pull back a little, pull back a little more, keep pulling back, keep pulling back, keep pulling back. Nothing's in focus. There we go again, focus. We go up above. Go in, go in, go in. Come out. There we go. focusing um, bracket basically allows me to move the camera closer and further away from my subject to allow certain things to come into focus and then allow it to go out. It's basically what I'm doing. It's just a much more expensive way to do what I'm doing. So I think I got that flower a little bit. Now one thing I do want to do, um, something's been killing my roses and I want to find out what's killing them. So I'm going to come over here.